Hello again and welcome to another Morning and Glory bolt action video. In today's episode, we shall be casting our ever critical eye over another bolt action unit. Now, recently I've been covering a lot of allied tanks, but I thought I would go back over to the Axis and review one of the most infamous units in bolt action. An absolute whirlwind of death, an infantry destroyer. I'm, of course, talking about the Verbal Vind. And so, without further ado, let's take a look at the good, the bad, and the ugly of this German unit. Brain. Open top tank. Fucking great engineering. As is tradition, let us begin with a brief overview of this unit entry. Firstly, we have the points cost. Now, as is the case with nearly every bolt action unit, the Whirlwind has a variable points cost depending on its experience. So if you take it as inexperienced, it will cost 210 points. Regular, it will cost 240 points, and Veteran, it will cost 270 points. If you're new to bot action, you might be wondering what the difference is between these different Veterancies. Why wouldn't you just go for the cheapest one, right? I mean, after all, it's armed with the same guns either way, right? The big reason why you wouldn't go for inexperience is you get quite a lot of debuffs. For example, you are permanently at a minus one to hit and... Well, action is a game all about to hit modifiers and you want to try and avoid them where you can. If you're at minus one to hit with this thing, it means a lot of the time you are going to be hitting on sixes followed by sixes. And so you might have saved a few points, but you're rarely going to hit anything, including the broadside of a barn. You're also going to be much lower leadership. An inexperienced unit only has leadership eight. If you take a single pin marker, then for your unit to do anything, it will have to pass a leadership on 2d6 and rolling seven or less. That is not reliable for what very well may be your only tank or armored vehicle in the army. On the other hand, if you go regular, you get a leadership of nine, which makes it much more reliable. And also you don't have that inbuilt minus one to hit. If you go for veteran, then you get a leadership of 10. And in theory, in theory, you also get to ignore a lot of pins from weapons that can't hurt you. This is an advantage of being a veteran armored vehicle. But as we'll see later on, veteran will not help you very much with the verbal win. So you're pretty much always going to want to take this thing as a regular unit. Now, regardless of what veterancy you take it at, it comes with the same weapons each time. The main thing is the four. I'll say that again. Four. One, two, three, four. It's an eye-watering amount of light auto cannons with a 360 degree arc of fire. And you also get one forward facing hull mounted MMG. Four auto cannons is frankly a staggering amount. It gives you a phenomenal amount of anti infantry and light vehicle firepower, which is very relevant in bot action, which is often described as the infantryman's game. Now, often when you have units which have this much firepower, you tend to find that they occupy lighter platforms, maybe like a truck or a light tank. This is not the case with the Wibblewind. Considering that it was based on the Panzer IV chassis, it gets a fantastic damage value of 9+. plus. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not going to be able to tank shells from a super heavy gun but it does mean that your opponent will need to leverage proper anti-tank against this thing in order to reliably knock it out. Then we get to the special rules. The first one is flak. This allows you to drive off incoming planes, typically those that have been called in by an air observer. With the amount of light autocannons this thing has, you should reliably stop any plane from making a successful attack run, especially combined with the fact that a lot of German vehicles also get pinted, pintle mounted MMGs, which can contribute to the flak storm you can throw into the air. The other special rule we have is open topped. This is a straight up weakness. It's a big debuff. It means that anything can pin you up. So if someone shoots you with a rifle and they get a hit, 
you take a pin. Even though you're an armored vehicle, even though it can't normally hurt you, you take a pin because you're open topped. This is why I said taking a veteran Whirlwind was basically a waste of time because one of the big advantages of being veteran is you ignore pins from things that can't hurt you. Like if someone shoots you with an anti-tank rifle at long range, your crew can go, oh, well, that just pinged off our front armor with, with veteran. We've encountered that before. We know not to take the pin from that. But with the verbal wind, because it's open top, someone could shoot with a rifle, shoot with a, a light machine gun from a squad, and you can still potentially take that pin. That's why you want to go regular on this thing, because you're probably going to catch a pin here and there. And you need something with enough leadership to be able to get those pins off or just obey orders. Now that just about covers the general principles of the Whirlwind, but let's get into the deep dive, the nitty gritty. Let's scratch below the surface. One of the best things about this unit is how readily it shreds infantry. I mentioned this before, but bolt action is considered to be an infantryman's game. Infantry tend to win encounters, win battles of bolt action, and this thing completely shreds them. More importantly, not only does it shred regular and inexperienced infantry, but it will completely dunk upon veteran infantry as well. Normally, when you shoot a veteran infantryman, you have to roll to hit, as per normal, but then to wound them, you have to roll a 5+. Plus. And I've played so many games, and I've seen so many games, like battle reports, all the ones that I've been watching in real life, where people have been blasting and blasting and blasting away machine guns, rifles, BARs, just everything you can think of, just slinging shots downrange into some veteran infantry, and they're just not getting those five ups for the kills. They're just not materializing this being a little unlucky. Veteran infantry dug into heavy cover can be one of the most difficult things in the game to remove if you don't have the ability to dig them out, to destroy them. And so the Whirlwind is a fantastic counter to that. Sure, you're still going to suffer minus one to hit modifiers or minus two to hit modifiers, but when those shots connect, you have plus two to wound. You've got plus two pen because of the light auto cannons. This means that even veteran infantry are dying on threes. And don't forget that the light auto cannon, it fires two shots per auto cannon. So this thing fires eight shots. Each one of those shots is a one inch blast, which means it's very easy, even if your opponent's spreading out and keeping an inch spacing, to get two infantry per one of those shots under the template. Once you've got those shots connected, once you've started hitting, that's going to stack up a lot of potential wounds. For example, let's say your Whirlwind is shooting some American paratroopers who are at long range behind light cover. With your eight shots, you should get two to three hits. If you get two hits because of the one inch template, that's actually going to end up being four hits on the enemy and then if it's three hits it's gonna be six six hits with the one inch template you then roll to wound and you are wounding them on threes that's going to result in three to four enemy casualties that could easily be the majority of an enemy infantry unit wiped out some people take five-man veteran squads the most you tend to see taking typically is like eight because they are quite expensive if you're facing off against a five-man squad, you've basically made it combat ineffective. And if you're facing off against an eight-man veteran unit, you've just cut it in half. That is going to be a huge blow for your opponent to deal with. But it's not just infantry that this thing shreds. It's fantastic into light vehicles, especially soft skin ones. But it's good at dealing with enemy half tracks as well. Just with the number of shots that it's putting out, if you start shooting at the enemy front armor and you're in half range, you're going to be on plus two defense. It's only a five start shredding through things like half tracks armored cars really good with dealing with armored cars most of which tend to be damage value seven plus the whirlwind does reach its limits when engaging light tanks and also medium tanks as well if you're shooting against a light tank on the front arm at long range you won't be able to penetrate it with a whirlwind you have to get closer and with it being open topped that could result in you receiving multiple pins if you're able to get side shots on these things at short range, you might be able to reliably start shredding. But really, the Whirlwind wants to be focused on bullying infantry and light vehicles. One other big perk about the Whirlwind is its points cost. 240 points is very, very similar. It's in the same ballpark as just a standard Panzer IV. A standard Panzer IV sure has a heavy anti-tank gun. And that can be very useful for taking on other enemy tanks. But if you're playing in a more meta game where heavy tanks aren't really a thing 
and you're more likely to encounter fleets of Panzer twos or other light tanks like tankettes and stuff like that, then the whirlwind is going to be fine. The Panzer IV is actually going to be a lot of points on a unit that's main gun is going to be massive overkill. Don't get me wrong, I love my Panzer IV and I often use it as my main source of anti-tank. And the heavy anti-tank gun still has a two-inch blast template, so it can do stuff into infantry, but I would be lying if I said that my Panzer IV hasn't spent the majority of its life going double machine gun and hosing down enemy infantry. Well, if it's spending most of the time killing infantry, why not just take a specialized version of the Whirlwind and do that job properly? However, it's not all good for the Whirlwind. It does have some problems. Firstly, it is very good at killing infantry. And like we said, you can get away with, you know, not going with a huge amount of anti-tank. But you're still going to need some. If you're not taking something like a Panzer IV or another German tank to do your anti-tank duties, then those points are going to have to come somewhere else. You're going to need either Panzerfaust in your units or a Panzer Shrek team or some kind of armored car, which potentially has got to be an anti-tank. But the anti-tank is going to have to exist because you always need a bit of insurance. For sure, maybe the meta is a lot of light vehicles, but some mad bastard is going to turn up to a tournament with a Tiger tank or Pershing, and you end up going to a fight with that thing and just being unable to play with it, it's going to be a bit of a nasty time. So, yes, it's the same cost as a regular Panzer IV, but if you're not using the Panzer IV for anti-tank, you're going to have to spend points elsewhere to cover your ass. Also, I don't think it can be overstated how much of a nerf, how much of a problem open topped is. Machine guns on everywhere in bot action even if they're not in machine gun teams you will have units which have light machine guns in them or you face across against americans who've got bars for like five points that american gi squad with a couple of bars can just fire a cursory volley against your whirlwind and put a pin on it if your opponent takes some spare firepower Maybe he's got an MMG hanging around on one of his transports. Maybe he's got a truck with an MMG on it. He can just, with just a little bit of spare, surplus, bullets, start stacking one, two, three pins on your Whirlwind. And then you're going to have to rally it. And if there's only five or six turns in a game, then that's potentially a lot of time that your Whirlwind is having to rally off pins when it's not shooting. In summary, the German Wolverine is a very good unit. It has a lot of firepower. It's good at dealing with what can be considered the meta of bot action, and it's relatively durable. But it will require you to plug holes in your list as it won't be covering the anti-tank that a lot of German tanks generally do. And it is susceptible to being picked off and made combat ineffective, even just by small arms fire. Well, at least that's what I think. But of course, all of this is like my opinion, man. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Also, if you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe to never miss an episode. Would you like to know more? If so, then please consider becoming a channel member or patron. By supporting the channel, not only will you be doing your part, but you'll also be helping me create more content for your viewing pleasure and unlocking a whole host of perks. You get everything from a badge next to your name, custom emojis, but the big one is access to the Mordian Glory Discord server, an online community with almost two and a half thousand active members. It's always popping off in the MG Discord. We've got channels for army lists, hobbying, tactics, stories, and even a pretty spicy meme section as well. For all you greenhorns that wanted to see the Mordian glory hole, today is your lucky day. And joking aside, I do want to say a massive thank you to all of the current channel members and patrons. You guys are amazing. Truly the lifeblood of the channel. I could not do Mordian glory full time without the incredible and generous support of my members so thank you guys so much and last but certainly not least 
I want to say a personal thank you to all of my top tier Patreons. These are the War Masters, the people who have truly gone above and beyond the call of duty. So a heartfelt thank you to Alex Dengal, Bon Bon Vert, Mad Larkin, Marcus Roberts, Mark Panconi, RJ Scorpion, Swordfish Trombone, Try Again Bragg, John Stubbs, Nick Walsh, Diesel Fox, and August Barney. Seriously, guys, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Your support is incredible and it makes a huge difference. Thank you so much. That's all for now. Hope you've all enjoyed today's video. And of course, as always, I'll see you guys next time.